What do you know about the 40s? Hi guys, welcome back to another year of the Mystery Box Challenge. I've got a box, we're gonna open it up and see what Kelly Barlow sent me to craft with. So if you're new to the Mystery Box Challenge, I sent a box over to Courtney, who's the creator of the Mystery Box Challenge. It's been going for years. I believe this is the fourth. It could be the fifth. I'd have to check, but she's upping her game. And boy, is she upping her game. So I got my box from Kelly and right on top, there is a little note that says Val. So sweet. So really cute. Oh my goodness. It's, you have to see this. How cute did she make my box? I can't wait to dig into everything. Seriously, it is so stinking adorable. So right on top, some chocolate and some socks, and it says a little something for you. Thank you, that is so sweet. Now we've got challenge item number two. Challenge item number one. Right on top, I am finding some tissue paper and it's the tissue paper she used in this box. I've got a wooden arrow from the Dollar Tree, love. I've got some Crafters Square tool, interesting, white. I don't think I've seen that in my stores. Okay, some craft paper, that's always a good thing to work with, thrilled about that. Also some jute cord in the navy and the jute she curates everything so well got some burlap ribbon also got some metal text for valentine's day love xoxo and valentine and then we've got oh this is adorable a love sign it's sort of an off-white creamy vanilla love that and some super cute floral daisies this is from michael's love also got a burlap bag love okay i've got a metal plaque this is the box that just keeps on giving super cute little arched decorative piece all my wheels are turning and then so cute. Oh, Kelly, <laughs> thank you. I think she just gave me my inspiration in this sign. So now for those pesky challenge items. So let's get into the challenge items. These are the two items that we absolutely have to use from our box. Everything else we should try and use and we can also pull from our personal craft stash. Now, one of our challenge items this time around is going to be trash. That's right, Courtney told us to send each other trash. Anything that we would have put in the trash or discarded has to be one of our challenge items. So let's see what number one is. I'm gonna just guess, we'll make this part of the fun. I'm thinking this is a plant hanger like the metal plant hangers from the Dollar Tree. It just kind of feels like that. I was right. So that's a great item to work with, even as a challenge item, although it can be a little tricky. So this must be my challenge item that is a piece of garbage. The other thing is that this time around we have a twist and we are working in eras. So my era to work home decor, oh my gosh, Kelly. My era is the 1940s. This is my other challenge item. It could be so much worse. At least. Let's figure out what we're gonna make. For our first DIY, we're starting off with an inspiration from music from the 40s. Now my personal favorite artist is Ella Fitzgerald and she sang A Sunday Kind of Love. So that was written in the 40s. I printed out the sheet music just on a regular black and white printer and then I went ahead and cut it down to the size of the craft paper that Kelly included in my box and that sort of matched up. I just trimmed off any excess and then I went ahead and I used a glue stick to attach the two together. Now, I don't know about you, but in our life right now, we're surrounded by weddings and that has got me thinking about how weddings were in the 40s 
things were simpler. It was a different time. Lots of young men were getting ready to leave for war. And so there were a lot of last minute thrown together weddings. And I was looking through pictures, noticing that they had lots of fun little details that did not cost a lot of money. And this was inspired by that. So I just filled these cones that I hot glued together with some bird seed. I could picture these being used as a quick little send off to a simple ceremony that you could have even had outside, even on a non-traditional day like a Sunday, which I think is a wonderful, beautiful thing. Now, after that first DIY, I was really into looking at pictures of 40s weddings, and I noticed that they had very large bouquets. Now, so did I, but I was not married in the 40s. I was married in 2000, and I'm a big girl, and I wanted everything to scale. So as I was looking at these bouquets, I noticed how large they were, and there was a lot of just natural elements. I'm sure that people did not spend an arm and a leg. They went out in their gardens. They gathered a few things, maybe from a florist, and put them together themselves. They were gorgeous, very flowy, organic, asymmetrical. So I just grabbed a bunch of floral that I fell in love with from the Dollar Tree. Again, giving the nod to a time that was simpler when people didn't have a lot of money. So you either went with cheaper options or you just kind of made do with what you had. I do think that some of the Dollar Tree spring floral is beautiful and can be used for weddings if you have an eye for color. I would say stay with neutrals, maybe mix in one or two accent colors. Don't get crazy. I went with a lot of ivories and greens. They have out all kinds of different textured greens right now like those silver dollars that look like eucalyptus and just remember that anything that looks artificial like these green leaves you can pop those off so that it doesn't throw the eye to saying that it's definitely artificial and don't be afraid to work with your flowers bend your stems give them more of a natural flowy feeling once I have them all together how I like them and attached with a couple of zip ties for security since this is a larger bouquet I went in with the burlap ribbon that Kelly sent me to cover up all of those faux stems. Now, something that I'm going to add at the last minute is actually some ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I noticed that a lot of the bouquets had flowing little strings of ribbon along the bottom, and I thought that would be a nice added touch that I did add at the end. I just went ahead and strung them through different branches of the flowers. And of course, I did hot glue and secure my ribbon as my handle. I really think that that worked well to make it look like a true bouquet. Now, once I was looking at it, fluffing it, I noticed a few of the flowers were just sitting up a little too high. So again, don't be afraid. Take any wire snips, just cut off any excess length so that things sort of flow. They're a little more even. I did that in a few different places and it really did make a huge difference. I just think you've got to play with it until you're happy with it. And that is how I ended up with this beautiful vintage inspired wedding bouquet. Something like this would be great to make and DIY if you were doing a bouquet toss and you wanted to keep your real flowers or you didn't want to pay a whole lot for a toss bouquet. I know that things are costing outrageous amounts of money. Even faux bouquets that you can buy at places like Hobby Lobby are pretty pricey. So if you can put them together with things less expensive, like from the Dollar Tree, don't be afraid to do it. I think that this turned out beautiful. I definitely could see this being mistaken for real flowers. I think the key is to look for a color palette that is similar to nature and then add lots of texture. And how fun would it be to give this to a little one that likes to make believe and play bright? I think that this would be a great dress up item. Now for our next DIY and this time around I'm using one of the challenge items which is my hanging chain. I did take it outside and gave it a coat of gold spray paint because I had sort of this vision in mind after looking at all of these vintage wedding photos from the 40s. I took one of the gold hoops you can find in a three pack from the Dollar Tree and more floral. I went ahead and cut down quite a few pieces three bundles of this particular floral in the white and then 
more of those silver dollar strands and some of the green hydrangeas. And I just went ahead and started twisting it around the hoop at different areas, making sure that those white strands, I think they're called wisteria, landed at different heights. So it looked a little more natural and flowy, almost like what you would picture like grapes falling off of a vine would look like. And then for more security, especially when I got to the silver dollar and the hydrangea, I did use some gold floral wire to wire those in place because they didn't have as great of a stems as the wisteria. So just added in a bit of that here and there around the whole circumference. I didn't do a ton. You could definitely go all out to where you don't even see the hoop itself. I thought the gold was pretty and it coordinated so well with my challenge item that I wanted to see just a little bit of the gold peeking through and I really like it like that. And then I went ahead and I added some hydrangeas around the entire circumference with my floral wire. And just like that, I have this beautiful decorative piece. Now this would not have to be used for a wedding, but I was looking at a lot of the photos from the 40s and they had outdoor weddings and church weddings. There were a few backdrops that this was inspired by. I think this would be beautiful for a bridal shower, a birthday party, a Mother's Day tea. You could make a ton of these. I actually had forgotten to add my tool, so I ran home and grabbed it and I added it just to flow over the top of the chains. And I think that this would be beautiful if you were doing an evening event and you did string lights, something super lightweight, maybe battery operated, that you could hide and go ahead and turn the lights on for a little bit twinkle. There are also these round glass hanging sort of terrariums at the Dollar Tree. I've seen them in the floral section for years. I think a few of those suspended down maybe from some fishing wire with some LED battery candles in them would be beautiful. Now let's go on to our next DIY. For this one, I'm using almost all the items left in my box. Starting off with that white window, I did remove the front little tag. Then I took the love text from the set of three Valentine texts and I gave it a coat of rose gold. Next up, I'm gonna take this little marriage sign that inspired all of this, and I'm gonna go ahead and trace some lines so that it matches up with this window piece. I'm going to do the same with the wooden arrow so that I can go out to the garage and cut off one end of that. Next, I'm going to take the metal tile piece and I'm going to curve it to match the arch of this window. Now, after cutting down this piece with a box cutter, I am going to transform it into a scene of lovebirds. Now you guys, I am no painter, honestly. It makes my skin crawl, it makes me super nervous and sweaty, but I decided to go for it and I'm so glad I did. I just mixed up a few different colors of blue and some white to give sort of a sky effect. And then I got really brave. I pulled out a few different yellows and beiges and whites and browns, and I just went for it. Now the shape of these birds changed at least five or six times. Um, I think the key is just to keep layering, and that's what I did. I was looking at pictures of birds and different things from the 40s, and I was noticing on things like invitations and anything with text, that had a design to it, it was birds. So that is where this inspiration came from. I'm going to attempt at creating a flowering tree with a little nest that they're sitting on. Again, I am no artist, so maybe watch a Bob Ross video if you attempt something like this. I have to say at the end of the day, this is probably the DIY I'm happiest with, probably because painting scares me. Now, once I had my tree branches and the bodies of my birds sort of kind of how I wanted them, I did get out some white paint and I just started adding little white flowers on the ends of the branches. Now, I was thinking of a cherry blossom tree, I didn't look up any images of a cherry blossom tree, but after I had added quite a few little white dots, I added in some pink on top, just layering them. And at the very end, and I didn't even film this part, I did add some yellow just in little spots. I also had to get really creative with the nest. 
I don't know what I was thinking when it came to the nest. Probably should have just left it a bird, but one thing led to another and that's what happens when I paint. I usually end up going a little too far and um, I have to say I'm much happier with the little birdie on the bottom of the screen than I am with the one on top in the nest. I just feel like she started off really good and then I went a little too crazy. I kept giving her more feathers which made it look like she had multiple tails. It just kind of got out of hand. Now I do think that adding in the browns and whites definitely helped and in the end I was happy with how they turned out but I tell you what this really took some bravery on my part because like I said I am not a painter. Now once I had that arrow chopped off I painted it white and then I'm hot gluing it to the bottom of our painted piece and now I'm going to hot glue the window onto the other end of the arrow and just adding the little love sign that has dried on the front of the window and now I'm taking that tile piece that is sort of like a rose gold copper hot gluing it to the top and just like that I have a really sweet either lovebirds birdhouse you could definitely put a little dish of seeds in here I was picturing it more for a wedding where you could put little cards or little love notes in it I really like how this turned out. I know it's not going to be for everyone, but I'm just super proud of myself for trying to paint something. What about you? Does painting something specific scare you to death? If so, what is the last thing that you painted? Because I was trying to recall, I cannot remember the last time I painted an object that wasn't just a solid color. I probably should do it more. Now for our next DIY, I'm going to be conquering another fear of mine, which is making things with tissue paper. So I was looking at the tissue paper, trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and I decided to take the white tissue paper and fold it up onto itself, make it multi-layered, probably close to at least 30 layers, and then cut a flower out of it. So going along with our wedding theme, I was trying to think of a way to make affordable boutonnieres. Now I have done videos in the past on corsages and on boutonnieres with faux floral, but I've never tried it with a tissue paper flower. So that is what we are doing. I am going to cut little notches in these and then I'm just using a wooden skewer as the center. Now I was just sort of folding the paper up onto itself over and over and over and over and over again, adding a little bit of hot glue every few, just so that it would sort of stay in place on the wooden skewer. And then once I had them all sort of facing the same direction, all fluffed and unfolded, I was pretty happy with how it was looking. It was actually looking a lot like a carnation to me. Now I'm sure I could have looked up different ways to do different flowers like roses, but then I decided to get out some blush because once upon a time I had every makeup subscription known to man and I never need to buy any more makeup for the rest of my life. So I'm going to use some of the blush that I will probably never get to on my face and add it to this little flower to make it pink. Now I'm taking a few little pieces of scrap floral and I'm going to create a little boutonniere out of this. So I did use some floral wire to wrap the little wooden skewer of that tissue paper flower onto this. And then I'm going to add in a few scraps from the other DIYs that we created. And then I'm going to top it off with a little bit of cream ribbon around the bottom, just to hide the fact that it is a faux floral stem after snipping off the excess. And after I had that secured with some hot glue, I did add in a little bow around the top as well, which would make it really easy for pinning onto a lapel. I'm actually super happy with how this turned out. I think it is really pretty, really simple. I wouldn't look at it and automatically think that is tissue paper. But speaking of tissue paper, this was reminding me a little bit of the little flowers we made in grade school. It's been a long time since I have made a paper flower, but I'm happy I did. I think this is a great way to use what you have and I think it turned out really cute. Now for our next DIY, we're gonna be using that burlap bag and I'm going to just de-seam it. I'm going to just rip it 
to pieces because I need a few large pieces to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the handle portion of the two largest pieces, and then I'm going to trace a triangle on one side. So I was looking through these 40s wedding pictures and they had a few flower girls with these sort of cylinder shaped oblong baskets. Now while I won't be making a basket out of air, I can make something that looks like one. So I went ahead and did the same thing, tracing that shape on the other piece or other side of the two pieces. Now I'm going to hot glue them together, just create a little seam on one side, and then I'm going to flip it and do it on the other side so that it is connected into a cylinder, securing it with hot glue. Now back in the day, they didn't have hot glue. I'm sure that they would have sewn anything that was handmade, but I'm just gonna use some hot glue. So once I had the main portion of the bag together, I traced a sort of oval onto more of that fabric that was sort of the bottom and I'm cutting out two of this shape. Now our mystery trash garbage comes into play. I'm going to trace out this shape onto the cardboard as well. I'm going to cut that out and because I want it to be sort of a little standing basket I'm going to trim a little bit excess off of that just so that I have some fabric to use as seams. I'm gonna hot glue the cardboard down to the center and then cover the other side with the other piece of fabric. And then I did cut little slits into it. And now I'm just gonna secure it with some hot glue to the bottom of our little basket. Now, if I had to do this over again, I would have made this piece smaller. I kind of overshot the size of it, and it was a little difficult to fit in to the seams of the little basket. I did try and create a little seam and a little edge, and then I just folded in the top till it was the height that I liked, cut off a little excess, and then I went ahead and cut some slits on that as well so that it will make it nice and neat as we fold that down as sort of a hem and hot glue those to the inside of the bag. Now you can't have a flower girl basket without a handle. So we're also gonna be using that jute cord that Kelly sent me. Now I wanted to just have it very neutral so I did remove all of that blue jute and then I rewound it on itself so that it was just a little bit thicker, tying off a couple of knots on two ends until it was the right length and then I secured that to either side of our little basket with some hot glue. Now the last step is I'm gonna go ahead and take the daisies that Kelly sent me and I sort of want them to look a little more uniform. There were some bright ones and medium tone and some lighter ones. So I just disassembled them so that I could layer them and they look a little more even. I'm going to be gluing three on one side of the basket layering them with the different brightness oranges and also cutting off the little centers of the little green stems that would sort of stick onto the floral and that way it'll be nice and flat. I'm gonna just hot glue those onto the centers of all of my little flowers and repeat that process on the other side of the bag. And just like that, I have a very simple DIY 40s inspired basket. Now it is inspired by the 40s because of the shape. I really think this turned out cute. Now those daisies kind of say 70s so you'll have to forgive me for that but I really tried. I pulled out all the shots for this one. What do you guys think? What is your favorite? Be sure to comment down below and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. So what do you think? How did I do? Comment down below and let me know, pass or fail. Also, there's going to be voting this time around, so keep your eyes open for that. I will have all of that information in the description box and jump over to the playlist so you can see what I sent to Courtney and what she did.